Welcome back. You're now watching the lifestyle segment on the weekend show brought to you by Holocard Popcorn. Hello, Didi. Morning, Andy. How's your week? It was good. And happy day of the girl child to you. Thank you. And we're Thank going you. to invest in your rights, like we already Please do. do. <laughs> <laughs> How's your week? It was a week. <laughs> you know what? It just goes so fast that sometimes at the end you can barely recollect what mm -hmm. happened. And it's just because it's work. I mean, the way the economy is, all we do right now is just work, sleep, mm -hmm. and work. But talking about work, a lot of young people have actually been appointed into President Bola Metinimu's government. And I do find that actually very impressive. Because I remember when we were on the streets campaigning for the Not Too Young to Run bill. Besides people getting into um, elective positions, we now have people getting appointed to be executives in organizations, not just special advisors. I think that's absolutely brilliant. However, there's a huge task on their heads. The impression and the influence and the impact of this generation lies in the hands of those people who have been given the opportunity. We've asked for it, and now we've been given the opportunity. Are we going to be like the older generation that we talk about, or are we going to do something different? We'll be talking about that on the lifestyle segment of today's show. And joining us, we have... Joining us, we have David Nwokorie, who is the chairman of Media Subcommittee. Good morning, and morning. welcome to the morning. show. Morning to you. My pleasure. Thank so, you. welcome to the show. And you yeah. have a Nigerian Youth Summit, which is Nigerian Youth in Governance Youth Summit. In Governance Summit. And so, yeah, um, one of the committee chairmen for it. Tell yeah. us about this and why this is important. Yeah, we first of all, I must commend the progress and um, achievements that young people have made so far in their quest for to drive the conversation around uh, youth inclusion and policy making and um, politics. Um, I'd want to say that the NYGS is one of those platforms to consolidate on the progress that has been made already. Uh, Nigerian Youth and Governance Summit is scheduled to hold the 31st of this month and the uh, 2nd of November. Uh, the idea is to converge young people, stakeholders, uh, policy makers uh, in different sectors, you know, to come together and drive the conversation as I've earlier said, consolidate on what has been done, the progress that has been made already. I feel that uh, generally the struggle for youth inclusion still continues. A lot has been done, especially in the current administration. I, I think since I was born, I have to be very honest with you, I've not seen a breed of young stars in government as, as this one. I have to, uh, to, to commend. And, and, and it shows that a lot is being done that the, the cries, the advocacy, the activism, that the government is, is listening. And this is also another platform. We are saying, let youth leaders come together, let organizations come together. Globally, young people under 30 account for about half of the world's population. And it is projected that by 2030, you're going to see about 57% of people aged under 30. And despite that, you see in the global south, you see countries like developing economies, or semi-developing economies like uh, you see Nigeria, you see likes of India. India, for instance, has two parliaments, right? And average age in India, I think is the second largest country in the world, is about 29. And you see India, upper parliament, there's nobody there that is up to 35. Nobody there is, nobody there is less than 35, rather, right? And you look at the lower parliament, it's just 2% who are age 35 or below. You come in Nigeria, for instance, in our parliament, the youngest senator is 39, I think 39, 40. And it is, when you see 39, 40, 35, wow, they're so young. But we want to see a scenario where people in their 20s are given an opportunity. You know, people in um, their early 30s are given an opportunity. And I must commend the appointment of Jamila Bio Ibrahim, who's 37, the likes of Alawande, who's 34. I also hear that the president's cabinet, the people who are in their 20s, who are doing very well. So the essence is we are bringing all the stakeholders together. Please, what can be done? Um, there are several measures, several results-oriented um, framework and policies that would be engendered, right? So we're going to have um, an implementation framework, people putting their heads together to say, these are the challenges that young people are facing, and this is what we think should be done to foster the, the conversation. And if we need to reach the national, uh, reach out to the National Assembly to say, hey, we need legislation that would give us the opportunity to breed, 
We need legislation that will give us an opportunity to show what talk we are made of, you know, to, to, to share our ideas. I mean, if young people, Nigeria is a country of about over 200 million people, and if young people, um, youth aged between 18 and 35, constitute about over 55% of our population. So I, I, I think it is only ideal that this young person should also be brought on the table to make decisions that affect them. Yeah, basically, that is the summary of uh, NYGS. Yes. I agree with you that Nigerian youth should you. uh, be fully involved in yeah. governance. So can you share um, examples of successful Nigerian youths that have achieved a lot and created significant impact in governance so that it helps motivate other ones to join? Yes. So again, it's, it's called Youth in Governance Summit. So I have to, I, I, I am not trying to just um, focus alone on, on politics, but majorly it's about governance, mm -hmm. and governance is politics. So I'll, I'll bring it home. I don't want to sound so prosaic or abstract. For instance, I've, I've mentioned a few names yeah. to you. The, the president's principal secretary, for instance, is about 32, right? There are people who are aged 40, 24 who are working in the presidency currently. They're my, my personal very close friend and brother. He's the SA to the deputy senate president on uh, f uh, media and a senior legislative aide. He's 23. Abu Bakr Jafar Tijani. He's 23. So I, I, I think currently the youngest uh, federal lawmaker that Nigeria has had in about 23 years, 24 years, is 29, Akarachi Amadi. So, I mean, when I met him in the office, I, I shook him and I said, you have given a hope to young people, you know, the younger generation, that this is possible, that this can be done in the in the 21st uh, uh, um, um, century so these are a few names that nigerians can verify and resonate with to say that a lot is going on a lot is going on i mean since the activism for youth inclusion in politics and we are not just seeing youth who are making noise we want uh, a stake and the political process there are people who have content people who have value people who can complement uh, the big wigs or the old wigs or the veterans, I rather use the word veterans in, mm. in politics, because as there is uh, a new generation coming up, it is very important for you to develop a new set of leaders. And you cannot develop them if you don't give them an opportunity to you know, show what, what they are made of. Yeah. We have um, Nesimon Omamuyuvi, sorry if I <laughs> um, didn't pronounce that right, and you're the convener of this summit. What um, inspired you to do this? You know, the idea is, is not a one-man thing. I'm actually coordinating it nationally. It's an idea of young persons, you know, coming together to create something new. Uh, if I could, you know, give you an example, you know what we call the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, for instance. Now, it started as something like this. And now you see all the CEOs in Nigeria are part of this, the government, it becomes a policy making uh, you know, team group for them. That is how we plan this Nigeria economy, uh, Nigerian Youth Governance Summit group to be eventually. The idea is that we're talking about youth from all sectors, not just politics. You talk about youth when it comes to the private sector, when it comes to youth, even that to the traditional sector. That is why we're pushing out for both young traditional rulers, we're pushing out for those that are in the public space and those in politics. Because the whole idea is that we're trying to be all engaging. We're trying to say it is actually a three-way thing. We have those that are already ahead of us, the older ones. They, are, they act as mentors. We have those that are already in positions, which whereby they are holding positions, whether politically in the private sector, wherever they find themselves. Then most of us here are privileged. That is why we can even have such a summit and help the other ones. There's also a set of youth that don't even have the privilege we have to be here today. Now, what we're saying is that whatever we are doing has to affect the young older ones that may not have the privilege of where we stand. Remember, we are growing older. If this country is not good or safe enough for we to live, it's going to affect our generation, our children's old generation. So we're saying as youth, whether we don't want to japa, we want to stay in Nigeria. Nigeria has good stories to tell about those that are there, they are back here. Nigeria has stories of those that have been here. Nigeria has those stories of those that have made it, whether here or outside, I'm coming back. So we're saying that Nigerian Youth Governance Summit is a summit all encompassing of all sectors, private, public sector. 
we are not actually excluding the older persons because they will also it's okay act to as exclude locals. them. They've had their time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> sometimes you try to include everybody too much, yes. which is great, but this is about young people okay, and exactly. we need okay. to own it. Okay, now I want, I want to come in here. You know, sometimes the older person says the younger persons are those that only want to carry placards. Mm. Now we're talking about intellectual engagement. The summit happening from 31st of this month to 2nd of November. Nine, uh, National and African Youth Day is November every November 1st. So I said in commemoration of that, we are having this youth summit. But now, mind us, it's not a one-time thing. This may be the meeting edition, but it's not a jamboree. It's not the idea of maybe just giving awards and all. We are saying we want to have a continuous yearly engagement. Remember, we are bringing those from these sectors, those in the um, civil society, even those in the educational space. Like you talk about the um, committee of vice chancellors, you talk even ASU, because they are part of it. Then you True. talk about some NGOs that have actually been in the educational sector, because these are the people that are actually bring the younger persons forward. So we are saying we, it is a continuous engagement. And we have partners that are working with right from Nigeria Youth Parliament, NANS, NYC, N, NIPRO. It's a conversation that we're seeing Nigerian Youth Governance Summit and partners because it's not about the younger ones. We need the older ones as mentors and fellow younger persons to actually keep in line for we to achieve what we want. Okay, so at the end of the summit, what message are you passing across or what should we expect? Now, this is it. At the end of the summit, we're going to talk about not just having a communique. You know, there are communiques that just come and go. Yeah. Now, one thing that nobody can dispute about this new administration is the aspect of, you know, putting in young persons in key positions. You know the 2019 um, youth policy documents that was signed by the former president. We know that it was maybe well not implemented there. But we can see maybe a different change and you know in language from the new administration and all. Now we are saying that we are not APC or PDP or Labour. No, this is not a partisan summit. It's all encompassing. Now we are saying, how can we the good that's already been achieved by this administration? How can we also improve on it? How can we engage more persons? Not everybody can be in a political terrain. How can we also encourage those that are outside? So what we are saying is that at the end of this summit. We are going to be having communiques. Now, these communiques, we want to push it through the National Assembly, the Legislative Arm, both the Senate and the Reps, down to also states, House of Assemblies, down to the ministries of youths in all states, including the Min uh, Federal Ministry of Youths. You know, see that there are young two persons, then I will feel we have to keep working with continuously and also encourage them. That aside, there are going to be programs. One of the special programs that we are planning after the summit is like an exchange program. There are Nigerian youth in diaspora that are ready to have exchange programs with those that are in Nigeria, even if they can't travel out of this country. Whether in the aspect of tech, whether in the aspect of even medicine and others, they want to share their idea. So Nigerian um, Youth Governance Summit will enhance such a program whereby we have such exchange programs. Then also, the younger persons that are talented, that have, don't have that opportunity and space, we want to also use this summit to be able to create a platform for those that may be down there in our area markets that are talented, those in the upper part of Meduguri, Sokoto, the West in Lagos, wherever they find themselves, those in Abuja, because there are talents in this country, whether academically or even with their main hands. So what I'm saying is that this summit will help to shape in governance and create a platform whereby as much as we're discussing this, we're also creating solutions in partnership with our partners. Finally, for those who want to attend, how can they register and find um, you guys online? Okay, online is at NYGS Summit on Instagram. Then, um, also, apart from that, the registration is actually easy because it's going to be an hybrid event. You don't expect everybody around the country and those youth in diaspora yes, to come no. to Abuja. So the idea of the people coming to Abuja are basically the stakeholders. Who, you know, have yeah, so where is it going to happen? Because of it's time. It's going to be holding um, in Abuja. Yeah. The venue and all other um, information will pass we across. But it's only in media. Abuja. Mm -hmm. But now, mind not, is is an hybrid event, meaning it's going to be streamed online. People can join online, whichever place they find themselves, because this is the technological age. You can't actually just risk your transport or your life on your own. Okay, do you Abuja. want to share your social media handles in case people want to contact people directly, or should they just focus on the summit? Yes, no, they can, they can contact us. You know, it's at Ayamamus on Instagram. Instagram and Twitter, that's I A M M A M U Z. Okay. Then he also has his own. Yeah, David Okore, David underscore Okore. We also have an Instagram handle. 
Yeah. Yes, Nigerian Youth Governance Summit. Summit. That's yes. NYGS. Yes, and on Summit. X as well. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you so yeah. much you. for what you guys are doing. We wish you all the thank best. It's good that November first is the day for the youth, which mm -hmm. means I'm forever a youth, being my best day. <laughs> so forever and ever, I'll deal with that. Um, but thank you so much, and well done for all the work you're doing. Pleasure. And to the young people in government, we are counting on you. We'll take a quick break when we return. More on the weekend show.